All right, we're in this 1991 Lexus. I just filled it up. So this was the one I made a video about earlier where somebody put PEG 150 in it, which is way too thick for a retrofit oil in this vehicle, especially since they did a drop-in, uh, which is you know, a worst case scenario. But other than that, and me not being able to find this leak, yes, me not being, I don't find leaks all the time, but I, I think it's the evaporator on this one. Uh, he said when it gets charged, it only lasts about four months. And since we're in June, July right now, um, oh, what did just change? I just heard a sound change. Something changed. Okay, something changed in the door flap somewhere automatically. Something took over, and I don't have it in auto mode. But um, let's see, I have it in high, I have it in AC, I have it in recycle. You can see it's 319 right now. You can see the sun is right up there. This is a Lexus. It's been sitting here since 7:30 this morning. So this dash is like a hundred and uh, hundred and. 40, 140, not quite 150 degrees. Uh, the interior is baking hot, so it'll take a long time to cool off this interior with it in recycle mode. I'm taking the hot air, well, you can see outside, outside temperature, sitting in front of the condenser, 99 degrees. And we have 230 on the high side. I did overfill this system a little bit by about almost 100 grams. Uh, which is about three ounces. This is a retrofit, but he loses the refrigerant so fast and I'll be back here to do more cars. I'm, I'm in this shop all the time. Um, this car is here all the time. This is the body man's car. So I'm going to do this one. Look, at it, it's 22 PSI. Wait a minute, 100 degrees, 90 some degrees outside. We have a heavy load. We're a roasting car, full sun load, but wait a minute. 22 PSI, that can't be wrong. Wonder what our PT chart says about that. Oh my God. And I wonder what that, that bullshit see, uh, shit, shit sheet that was wrote up by somebody published on the internet that I did a few videos about. Wonder what it says when it's, you have a, you have an entering air temperature going over the condenser at hundred degrees, but yet you only have 240 degrees. That is not right. That is impossible according to that piece of internet sheet by a big company that produces the little whack-off cans with uh, all the snake oil additives in it. Okay, so let's let's take some RPMs up on this one, on this Lexus, that I know is overcharged, because I overcharged it. I know they dropped in 150 peg on it, what kind of screws things up in the first place, but let's just hit some RPMs, and let's see if I could grab a little of everything in here. Let's get it down, there we go. Now we got the supply temperature, we got the high side, the low side. Now let's get some RPMs. Can we see the RPMs up there? Let's get about 1500 RPMs. This is a big motor. You're cruising down uh, 3545. I don't think you go over 1700 RPMs with this big old motor in here. Cause this is the big boy in here. Well, for this time and era of car. So there we go. Did you, you see, can you see that? Yeah, I can see it in the screen up there. What's happening to the high side? What's happening to the low side? Wait a minute. RPMs went up. Let's go up to 2,000 RPMs. Let's get some uh, graphics here. We can see where I touched the throttle right there. We can see a little dip, a little dimple right there. If I could get it out of the shade, in the shade, so you can see it. Now, let's go up to 2,000 RPMs. Come on, get up there. You can go. There we go. 2,000 RPMs. What's happening here to the low side and high side? 20 PSI, it's still 20 PSI. Oh my God, the AC Pro whack-off can thing with the little blue spot, it says it's low. I gotta add more refrigerant. Let's keep adding in refrigerant. Of course, we can't see the high side because we're using the whack-off cans of AC Pro. And um, are we still, yep, we're still at 2,000 RPMs. And our high side's going up. Remember, there's a thermal fan clutch on here and two electric fans. So we're gonna have some funny stuff going on as that thermal fan clutch goes in and out of operation and fan speeds might be going from medium to high. So let's just watch this a minute because we're at 2000. Let me get it back up there. I'm at 1918. Let's get up there a little bit more. I want 2000, come on, come on. Okay, 2100 RPMs. Let's see what our low side pressure, cause you know, the old guys, those old dinosaurs tell you when you give more RPMs, 
so you could get your dyno juice into the car for your, your cools, uh, you know, your semen sample um, into the car. You raise RPMs, and it'll lower the low side, so it'll go, go in faster. We know, go faster. So let's see where we are now that we're over 2,000 RPMs. Well, we went 18 PSI, so we went down a little bit, 2 PSI, from idle to uh, over 2,000 RPMs. High size, let's go up to 2,500 RPMs. Let's see what this car does at 2,500 RPMs. Now we're going down the freeway at about 70 miles an hour. God, I wish I had a big fan to blow over the condenser. So we're a little over 25, 27, almost, almost 2,800 RPMs. Man, why is my low side coming down? Oh my God, my low side's coming down. Let's see, we're at 18.4 right there when we're at 2,000. We're at 19.2 PSI. Wait a minute, I went up. To 27, 2800 RPM, but yet our pressure went up instead of going down. That doesn't make sense. But what's the dinosaurs have to tell? Oh, what's happening here on our uh, high side? What's happening here? We're doing some major drops. Let's get over here in the shade. Let's see if I could zoom in on you guys and give you some clarity there. We're down to 196. What happened there? Our low side didn't move at all. Oh yeah, it went down to 17. But look at our high side. So that was probably our thermal fluid fan cuts kicking in really good right there. Then once it gets enough airflow over it, it'll cool down that bimetallic inside the center after a while, and it'll probably start going up and swinging again. But look at this. Let's get back here. Where are we at over here? Let's look at our temperatures. What's our temperatures? Well, in front of our condenser, our wireless Bluetooth probe has been pretty damn safe. You can see when the fan kicks up and down and the radiator heat circulates around and goes back up in front of the bumper and over and curves over, it reheats the air in front of the fan, depending on how it's moving. That's why we got this 97 degrees, superheating the condenser really hot. Nice and toasty. Uh, and you can see now our high side went down. Remember our high side went down? But look at this. When our high side was up, we were at 45 degrees out of the dash. Now that our high side went really down on the high side pressure, we went up to 50 degrees. Remember, this is an automatic system. So this is what you got. We're now at 197, 200, 19, 14 PSI. 15 psi oh we're really low on refrigerant guys you know those old fossil dinosaurs they say when you're this low you got to be 30 psi 15 psi. let's get this up to 3,000 rpms we need, we need more dino juice let's get a can of ac pro out here and whack off some more and fill this up because it's not in the green on those little gauges now why is it not in the green let me take my foot off the throttle here and let's see what happens i'm going to drop it right to idle check that out because we're up there at 3,000 RPMs, right? Check that out. Didn't it change a lot? Now, let me take my foot off the throttle. Boom. I just took my foot off the throttle. Let's see what happens. Our high side... Damn. Oh, I think my gauges just shut off. You see those two flat lines right there not moving at all? Oh, it moved. Because sometimes when it flat lines, uh, my gauges will time out for saving the battery, but it looks, no, it didn't time out. It was just really flat lined there for a while. So we'll let that go on roll, and I'm gonna explain this low side suction pressure. 19 PSI. All right, so let's take a look at this. And I'm gonna see, and I've said this in videos before, I get these compressors were getting launched and burnt up all the time by the hack shops who look use the little cans and top off. All those top off guys and the guys who use compressed air, they fuck these customers' cars up left and right. Remember, see that suction line? That is not your normal suction line. You have your POA or STV valve right there. After that, it's controlled, it's a lower pressure. That other valve that we can't see way down there, see that little black dot there in the center of the screen? 
that one right there. That is your suction pressure, and that suction pressure does not move because it's controlled by the STV valve right there, or POA valve, whatever the hell Lexus called it. Uh, so did everybody else have different names for it. Okay, that's it, enough for this one. We could tell all the whack off guys with their little cans to go jump in the lake and uh, or learn something. Actually admit that all these years they were lied to and they've been screwing up people's cars as we go into these new, this is not a variable display. As we go into new modern day variable display placement compressors were started in I think 1985 on the Cadillac with the first mechanical variable displacement compressor. Ever since then, shops have been responsible for destroying customers' cars, and especially the guys who use the shop compressed there. All right, see you again later.